Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Rise with Rosedale. Um, looks like we we finally got <coughs> Brother Jeff back here with us, uh, and also the other familiar face that we've had. Boys, take your hats off and act oh, like you are somebody. Oh, yeah. And they fuss at us over our hats. And the other one that we got back here, of course, the Branson Horton. Um, so, first off, Jeff, we are glad to have you back. How... How was your, your excursion? Oh, it was good. We had a great time. Done a little fishing, a lot of eating. Um, just kind of laid around, sit around, done a lot of mechanic work. Right. Putting rear ends in recliners. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> but no, we done a, We had a good time. I appreciate the getting to get away for a couple of days, but I uh, got back in here. Um, snowing like crazy when we left. Up, up there? Yeah. Man, it was a lot of snow. Um, went fishing on um, Monday, I guess. And caught a lot of crappy and some bluegill. And big old catfish. Stretched caught a big old catfish. Um, rode up, went to the Greenbrier, rode by the homestead and looked at it. And then one day there, just uh, just kind of driving around looking. And, but... <clears throat> I did watch the videos since I've been gone. You boys done really, really good. I'm proud of y'all, both of you. Thank you. Thanks, Reverend. Uh, y'all, y'all done good, and everything seemed to be in order when we got back. And we didn't burn the place down. <laughs> didn't burn Studio the place. still intact. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So everything was really good. Yeah, everything was great. Um, uh, maybe too good. <clears throat> maybe, maybe uh, we'll see after this one goes. How much longer you'll be on air with us? <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of. I don't think I'm just getting scooted right out here. But uh, anyways, yeah, I, I got up with, with Branson and asked him if he would be interested in coming mm -hmm. on. Uh, when was that? Tuesday morning. Asked him if he'd be fine coming on Tuesday morning. He uh, obviously agreed. Uh, and then he got up with Kevin and asked Kevin if he would be interested in coming on on Wednesday morning. Yeah. So... Yesterday both of them looked really great. Both mm -hmm. both shows done really good. Yep, both done. With you know, and it's amazing to me, Tom, how many people are watching this. I know. Uh, you know, it's kind of scary. I mean, I don't, scary is probably not the right word, uh, but it just makes you aware of. We're reaching to a whole. Yeah, well, I mean, we really, really are. Really, really are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like we've mentioned this several times, it is extremely lighthearted. You know, yeah. there's not a whole lot of deep <clears throat> biblical theology that goes into well, this. Well, there's not, but, but we, you know. Yeah, but we do, you know, give the sprinkle of Jesus whenever we there is an opportunity. We make sure that we mention, you know, something, scripture, but verse of the day, something yeah. of that nature mm -hmm. each and every day. So, but it, it is, it's going great and it's reaching a lot of people. So for you all watching, thank you all. Please continue to watch. Uh, if you're on Facebook, share these. That way we can reach more people because occasionally we do talk about issues that are of great importance to our, our community. Yeah, and I think that's what it was kind of started as, is kind of just a few minutes in the morning for people to say, all right, today's a new day. Uh, you know, we, we have prayer on here. Uh, we may be talking about some prayer request one day or, you know, if something's on our heart, we open up about it. Uh, you know, we've had our guests have been that we've invited in or people that can give us some information about, you know, and, and to the viewers. Uh, but it is lighthearted. Uh, it's genuine. Mm -hmm. And that's what everybody, you know, I've had a lot of people say, man, just keep it genuine. You know, mm -hmm. just, just be who we are. Right. I'm going out on the farm today and, you know, I've got a few phone calls to make throughout the day. But, you know, with everything being shut down and meetings being canceled, visitation, you know, we're not getting out. Me and Clyde's not able to go and visit people. But, um, you know, we're still ringing phone calls. and mm -hmm. and uh, But I'm going to go spend the day on the farm. I guess you're probably going to go do meals or I'm something. going to pack you? meals again for a little while. I mean, like that don't last but a little over an hour as far as the bus ride. Right. Uh, we ha I help them prep a little bit in the mornings. I typically don't get there until. So you actually go out on the bus with them? Yeah, I, oh, I usually okay. go out on you the cook. bus. You help them cook any? I, uh, Bobo, you lived with me for, for a while in Radford. You know I'm not a cook. 
Well, now, now, what about the the omelets and stuff he used to make in Radford? What kind of ingredients did you? <laughs> broccoli and sloppy Joe. I remember that one. Broccoli and sloppy Joe together. Together, yeah. one omelet. Mm -hmm. We had we tuna hot sauce omelet. Tuna and a hot sauce and omelet. cheese with cheese, of course. Oh yeah. Can I explain uh, myself? Uh, what yeah, else? I think can we you add? better. <laughs> the sloppy Joe and broccoli <laughs> omelet. Disgusting. For everyone that's watching and for you two here, I beg of you, don't ever try it. Okay. Do I really not didn't good. plan on it. Yeah, I don't think I'm going After to. After the smell of that, didn't plan on it. <laughs> <laughs> not good. All right. But we had Sloppy Joe's, let that meat, sauce, whatever you want to call it, left over. And I had eggs and I had some broccoli. <laughs> and so I had to make dinner one night without spending much money. And I did. You're poor in college, ain't you? Yeah. And Besides I, when we fix buffalo chicken pasta or dip. dip. Besides when we fix buffalo <laughs> chicken dip, that turns out to be an expensive endeavor. $70 for a crock pot. Yeah, it's pretty expensive <laughs> to make a big old crock pot for that. But, uh, and then the tuna, I don't have anything. I have no remorse for the tuna. It's delicious. Everyone needs to eat it. Tuna, hey, cheese, You're a big and tuna eggs. eater, ain't you? Yep. Canned tuna. I get in the pack of Star Kissed. Yeah. Yeah, it's the best. Tuna's delicious. I have no remorse for that. For you all that's looking at me saying he's disgusting, I don't care. It's wonderful. You still omelet, man? I still fix it. Tuna omelets. To this day. It's my favorite type of omelet. Okay. With a little bit of hot sauce on top. I'm going to take his word for it, Bubba. Yeah, me too. Hey, let me give you a cool Sloppy Joe story. So me and Tanya are married. First year we're married. She makes sloppy joes like two or three days a week. I'm not a sloppy joe fan. I can eat them, but hers wasn't sloppy joes. It was a uh, man -winch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Uh, now, if you invite the preacher over to eat, I'll eat a man -winch with you. That's fine. <laughs> I can eat it, but it's not my favorite. But we had these things like two or three days a week. Because Tanya, you know, we was newly married. It was cheap, whatever. So finally, we were at mom and dad's one day. And we're watching TV and a commercial come on. And I was like, here's my chance. So I look at the TV and I'm like, do you know, I just really don't like manwich. She looks at me and she goes, well, you've eaten enough of it. But that was the break that I needed to let her know in a kind, compassionate way that I hate manwich. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you're when you're newly married you can't just come home and say gosh it's nasty don't fix that no because they're gonna get mad they're gonna throw stuff you know all that stuff no but that was a good way so just some advice to so you, you didn't boy. have it two or three days a week no anymore. never had it again i don't oh. think to this day <laughs> i don't think she's ever fixed it again but just some, some some advice to our young viewers out there, maybe thinking about getting married. I know Cabo's out there. He's been on here. He popped a question, got a ring on a finger. You know, just some advice for you young couples out there. Just eat it and go on. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, again, I want to thank you all for taking over while I'm gone and like I said, this may be my last show. I don't know, depending on the views. So get on the <laughs> Facebook and like us and share us and comment about how you want the preacher to stay on. <laughs> now, we do want to keep you here. Okay. I'm not looking to get rid of you. As a permanent thing? No. I, I That it was just a two-day siesta. Okay. That was just a little getaway for you. No, you're... You're here to stay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm not so sure about you. You're kicking me off. You might not be here the next time. Oh, well, we'll just have to wait and see. Right. But I did want to come. I did want to get on the air with our viewers and tell you how much I appreciate you filling in for me. Well, yeah. You done a good job. You did awesome. excellent, and I appreciate you coming. The ratings, man, me. probably the most shared video we've had. Yeah. Yeah. I thoroughly appreciated you coming on here with me. I'm glad you asked me, Tom. Yeah. Well, I knew, I knew you ha you had my back, Bobo. Mm -hmm. Several so years had you. you back now. But you know, in the, in the ministry, guys, and you know, on our siesta that we went on, me and the first lady, as we took off, 
you know, I, I look at our show and I see how big an impact it's having and the views we're getting. We may want to toss this thing. I mean, I don't know. We may have to ask our production guys. Uh, you know, we may want to do us a fishing trip, have it live in an action fishing trip. Or yeah. A cooking show. Maybe Tom could make his. Do you think we could put a GoPro uh, on Jerry Lowe's head? On Jerry, no. You don't think so? No. You don't think that'd be a good idea for no. the church? I would be willing to do a cooking show. Yeah. Could you do a cooking show and show you how? Right I'm in here and tell us about how you would love to see Tom make his tuna omelet. <laughs> I could do that. You think you could? Yeah. We may do this. Listen, some. I ain't going to give you the ingredients for it just yet. Y'all just have to wait. I was about to, but I'm not no, going to. You got no secret. Secret. I ain't telling you. So we got us a fishing show, hunting show, a hey, spring gobbler. Man, whatever morning it was, my days of the weeks, because we're not having church. My, I don't know what day it is. But anyway, one morning. Uh, Stretch is hollering at me. I come downstairs in the cabin, and out in his yard, I'm talking 20 yards off the front porch, is a massive gobbler. Massive gobbler. Beard dragging around. I bet his, I bet the beard on it was that big around. I mean, just really? huge, huge gobbler. And then we seen, I don't know, it's probably five or six more we seen always up there. But gosh, this gobbler. So, yeah, we're going back. We might do us a... Little episode from up at the cabin and do a little turkey hunt. That sounds good. Let's do it. That does sound good. Yeah. yeah. Maybe our viewers, is there something you all would like to see uh, these boys do? You're not going <laughs> to participate? <laughs> not with what they come up with. I'll be there in the hunting show. I'll be there on the cooking show, but I'm afraid they'll come up with something in the grand Facebook world that I don't really want to participate in. That, that I'll do anything for bit. 15 bucks and a bent nickel. <laughs> <laughs> a bent nickel? A bent nickel. Okay. If y'all come up with 15 bucks, I'll bend the nickels. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, guys. Uh, you got a verse of the day for I us? I do have a verse of the day. Well, let's see what, uh, what the Lord wants us to have this morning, Jeffrey. Well, it's a... Uh, a little bit different of a, a verse today, but the uh, verse of the day when we get it up and go in here. <laughs> oh, I went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's doing that little whirly gig thing again. Buffer. <laughs> Buffy. Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> Buffer, ain't that like uh, Tylenol? The ibuprofen. <laughs> it's still no I'm glad Mason can eat it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mason, you're going to have to add it. Oh, yeah. All right, here's the verse of the day, guys. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, verse 18. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. As we think about that verse and we think about, uh, you know, there's so many people out there, and especially right now. Uh, Tom, the way I'm looking at this verse, you know, and Bobo, uh, and I think it's something even you all mentioned um, the other day, uh, about this being a spiritual warfare that's taking place. You know, there's so many smart people in our world today that God has given those gifts to, uh, whether it's doctors or economists, you know, the economy's suffering <clears throat> right now, but there's so many people uh, that are gifted, uh, that are advising leaders, whether it's the president, whether it's our governor. I heard just the other, you know, while we were gone, uh, we didn't have any cell phone service or anything like that, but uh, we're not did get back i did hear the governor extended the um quarantine or right. whatever the executive order was to june the 10th <clears throat> but there's so many smart people but oftentimes when we get into that pitfall there's a lot of people that think they're so smart that they deceive themselves and what this verse is really saying to me uh is if there's anyone among you that thinks he is wise in this age you know, Mama always said you can't get too big for your britches. You know, sometimes 
people are not as smart as they think they are. And sometimes they're not as wise as they think they are. It says, let him become a fool that he may become wise. You know, when we realize that Jesus Christ is all wisdom, he's uh, all-knowing, all-powerful, omnipresent, he's everywhere. When we get to a place in our relationship that, and there's probably a lot of these advisors that are Christians, and, you know, when we get to a place that we can say, Lord, you have empowered me with uh, the brains, uh, the insight, the intellect to find a cure for this corona or work on whatever it is. But I know that true healing and uh, miracles come from you. You know, I think when, when people come to that place, but oftentimes people deceive themselves because they think they're so smart, because they think they're well, so Well, what's wise. that scripture, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Proverbs. You know, to to really fear the Lord is, is when we really start finding how wise we really are. Um, I think that's the world we're living in today, folks. I think you have to come back to the place. And, you know, I look at all these, and I think that there is spiritual warfare that is taking place. God is getting us back to a place of, of where we're depending upon him. And um, what he's saying is, don't you think I still control all things? You know, I'm going to leave with a little joke, and it's kind of a corny joke, and I've told it a blue million times, but this scientist and God are arguing back and forth, and the scientist comes to God, and he says, oh, I can, I can make a man. And God said, really? He said, yeah. He said, it's not. He said, I can make a man. He said, you made him from the dirt. And, and this scientist had come up with a way of doing all this stuff. So he, God said, all right, show me. So the scientist bends over and grabs up a clump of dirt. And God says, whoa, whoa, whoa. He said, put that back down. He goes, what? He said, the dirt. He said, put it back down. He said, go make your own dirt. <laughs> so God started with, you know, the dust of the earth, the Bible says. And he breathed life into it. And if we ever forget that. That God is the controller of all things. Doesn't matter what's going on. Doesn't matter coronavirus, fall of Wall Street, who's in the White House. It doesn't matter. God's still on the throne and God is still in charge. Amen. You boys got anything? Nope. Just hope everyone has a wonderful day. Good day. Well... Uh, Bo. Jeffrey, since you've been uh, missing, well, Bo, what was you going to say? I was just going to ask Bo if he had any. No, I'm good. You fellers I, covered it all. I was going to ask you if you would take us home, brother. Uh, I'll do it. Get you a swig first. <laughs> Get me a little swig of the uh, the Rosedale Baptist uh, water there. Mm -hmm. All right, let's pray, guys. Lord, we do thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for both these young men that I sit here with. And, Lord, the, the privilege that it has been to be part of their life and for them to be part of mine. And, Lord, to watch them grow and to the men that you have called them to be, is an, is an, uh, it's an awesome feeling. It's an awesome experience. And, Lord, I want to thank you uh, for allowing me to be part of their story. And, Lord, I pray today for uh, wisdom and knowledge, not for myself, but for the leaders of this country, for this state, or that they truly look to you for their wisdom and knowledge. And Lord, that as we look at this verse today, or that so many people, we deceive ourselves because we think I can handle this or I can take care of it. When Lord, we need to lean upon you. And Lord, we need to realize that uh, you have the answers to all things, to all questions. In your wisdom is the answer. So, Lord, I pray for again for our, our advisors to these offices. I pray for uh, our president, our governor, our elected officials, or that they receive the wisdom, and or that they lean upon you in these times of, of pandemic. Again, Lord, thank you for allowing us to be a part of uh, this program. And, Lord, just ask you to bless it. Encourage somebody today and let them know that you love them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.